Nice to see you. I'm Khadar Jukhtai and you're watching my YouTube channel School of Advanced Chemistry. Today I'm going to discuss Cambridge O-Level Chemistry Paper 1 MCQs October November 2022 1 to Let's get started. Question number 1. Which piece of apparatus would be the most suitable for measuring exactly 37 cm cube of aqueous ammonia? Option number one or option A is 50 centimeter cube burette. B option 50 centimeter cube pipette. C option a 50 centimeter cube gas range. And D option a 50 centimeter cube measuring cylinder. Most suitable apparatus, you can say that is burette. Most suitable, the most accuracy goes to the burette. So A is the correct option. A is the correct option. Question number two, when iron reacted with dilute hydrochloric acid, hydrogen gas is formed. Impurities in the iron mean that some hydrogen sulfide gas is also formed. Hydrogen sulfide gas is soluble in water. Water vapor can be removed from the mixture of the gases using concentrated sulfuric acid. Which diagram shows the apparatus suitable to prepare a pure dry sample of hydrogen? Apparatus A, B, C and D. Number one, it's an inlet of this whole apparatus. I mean, from this funnel, we are going to add iron and hydrochloric acid, but this funnel is yet open. So the gas form may go outside from this funnel and some of the gas that will may enter into the second delivery tube so this one this apparatus is incorrect apparatus this is not the suitable apparatus let's see over here on b c and d they all are having uh, this one on off switch you can say that is going to stop the uh, exit of the hydrogen towards the atmosphere all gas will go into this uh, delivery tube so B is the correct one. Number one uh, is going to, but here is the, I mean, there is one thing that is wrong in this apparatus. That is, this delivery tube must be dipped into the water. That is a wrong arrangement of the apparatus. So again, this is incorrect option. So the incoming gases must be passed out through, bubbled out through the aqueous medium, through the water, through that solution. Same error is over here. So again, B is also incorrect or not suitable arrangement. Come towards C. Uh, there is on off switch, you can say yes. And uh, this is the first gas, I mean, carrying gas tube and it is uh, passing it through the water. Yes, the inlet is dipped into the water. So here is the dry gas that is coming toward this one into the next test tube or next apparatus. It is again, it should be dipped. Yes, it is. And the last one is the gas range. Yes. So the option C, apparatus C is accurate, is suitable apparatus to measure the dry sample of hydrogen gas. First, it is going to be wet with water. I mean, hydrogen sulfide is going to be separate in this section. The hydrogen gas is coming, that is a wet hydrogen gas, and it is now, uh, that is being dried over here, and uh, it's going to be dry H2, and it is being collected by gas range. So C is the correct option. Question number three. The following tests are carried out on a sample of green crystals. Remember that the color is green, green crystals. The crystals are dissolved in water and resulting solution is divided into two portions. Number one, aqueous sodium hydroxide is added. The first portion, a green precipitate form uh, soluble in excess sodium hydroxide that is formed. I mean green precipitate is formed and it is soluble in excess. Then simply it means there must be the presence of CR3 positive ion. Chromium 3 ion is present in this solution. That's why the solution is going to make the green precipitate and it's going to be solubilized in excess sodium hydroxide. The solution formed is heated and a gas is formed, is ga a gas is produced which turns litmus paper blue. So 
as far as O-level chemistry syllabus is concerned, there is only one gas that can turn red litmus paper blue, that is, uh, or any litmus paper that is turning blue, it's because of ammonia gas. So ammonia is also being formed. Why ammonia is going to be formed? That is because of the presence of ammonium ion. So ammonium positive ion is there. Chromium three positive ions are there. The second one, dilute nitric acid is added to the second portion, followed by the aqueous barium nitrate, white precipitate is formed. In case of addition of nitric acid, dilute nitric acid first is added, then we are adding barium nitrate and white precipitate are going to be formed. Then the possibility is of sulfate ions or SO3, two negative ions, sulfite ion. So SO4, two negative ion or SO3, two negative ion may be present. Let's see over here. Chromate, I mean, chromium 3 positive ion and uh, NH4 positive ion, ammonium ion and sulfate ion or sulfide ion. So, come toward the first option. Which three ions are present in the green crystals? Ammonium ion, correct. Chromium 3 ion, correct. Sulfate ion, correct. So, A is the correct option. A is the correct option. There is no need to check the other option. So, let's see over here. Question number 4. Changes of the state occur between the solid, liquid and gases. It's a liquid. It's changing into solid. Uh, solid back into the liquid. Liquid into gas. Gas back into the liquid. Which changes are occurring at P, Q, R, N, S? P. I mean, this is the forward reaction. Gas is going to change into the liquid. It is said to be condensation so it is condensing gas changing itself into liquid state it's a condensation and uh, what is the q liquid changing is into the solid state that is said to be freezing yes it is true what is the r r is liquid changing into the gas it is boiling or evaporation you can say and uh, s is the conversion of solid into a liquid that is the melting so once again it is confirmed that B is the correct option. Question number 5. The table shows information about the some oxides. Oxide structure effect of water. Oxide that is simple molecular structure and oxide is going to dissolve into the water to form an acid. It means that this oxide is having non-metallic element as well. So it is non-metallic oxide non-metallic element oxide is over here let's see over here for which of the element nitrogen phosphorus sulfur silicon could this information about their oxide to be correct number one phosphorus and sulfur only maybe maybe nitrogen and silicon only no silicon cannot be because uh, i mean silicon maybe but nitrogen oxides uh, yes, they both, both may be. Yes, yes. And nitrogen may be nitrogen oxide. They are acidic. Yes. But silicon cannot be. Yes, silicon cannot be because the silicon oxide is not having simple molecular structure. So silicon could not fit into this, I mean, model, you can say. So B is incorrect option. Let's see over here, the next one. Nitrogen, nitrogen oxide are acidic oxide. Their compound, their structure is similar, uh, simple molecular or simple molecular, yes. Phosphorus oxides are also acidic oxides and their structure is also simple molecular. I mean, P2O5, you can say. And... Uh, the first one NO2 or N2O4 you can see yes the last one is SO2 or SO3 yes they are all these three are having simple molecular structure they all are non-metallic oxide so they will give an acidic solution when they are allowed to dissolve into the water so C is the more appropriate more correct option you can say and the d1 is nitrogen phosphorus sulfur again silicon cannot fit into this model so c is the correct option as far as the four options are over here you can say you can see that a b c and d and c is the correct option
in among these uh, four options you can say. Question number six. Which statement about iodine atom and iodide ion is correct? Iodine, this is I2, iodine ion, iodide ion is I negative ion. Number, number one, or A option I mean, they are both isotope of iodine? No. It's ion, it's an element, they are not isotope. B, they undergo same chemical reaction? Answer is no. Chemical reaction basically depends upon the electronic structure of the species. It is having extra electron, it's in a negative ion, and you, you, you know that uh, they are acting as reducing agents. The pure halogens are oxidizing agents, so they are not having same chemical properties, same chemical reaction. C. They have same number of protons and they have same physical property. Now let's see over here. If uh, iodine, I mean iodide ion and iodine atom, sorry, this is not I2. Yes, they are having same number of protons. They are having same number of protons basically. Just iodine atom is having same number of protons. Yes, it is true. And it is negative ion, I mean iodide ion that is having different chemical reactions. This is simple atom, you can say, a simple normal atom. Its properties are different from its positive and its negative ions. And you can say B is incorrect, A is incorrect, and C is the correct. Yes, they are both are having same number of protons. They are having same physical properties. Once again, no, they are not having same physical property. So C is the correct option. C is the correct option. Question number seven. The table contains information about four substances. Which substances is an ionic compound? State at room temperature, you know ionic compound are solid at room temperature. So B, C or D may be the correct options. Conduct electricity at room temperature. Uh, no, they are non-conductor of electric current. Yes, D could be the correct option you can say. Yes. Okay, the next one is conduct electricity when molten. And uh, yes, they can conduct. Conduct electricity when aqua solution, when they are in aqua solution, yes, it is correct. So, D is the correct option. I mean, it is a solid at room temperature and uh, electricity in solid state, it cannot conduct electric current, yes. And in molten, they are good conductor. In aqua solution, they are also good connector. Yes, so D is the correct option. Question number eight, what is the nucleon number of the isotope of uranium? So, uh, you can see from the picture, from this uh, formula, this is uh, 92. That is the number of proton. This is Z. This is A, I mean atomic mass. Atomic mass is also said to be nucleon number. So nucleon number is equal to 235. 235. So C is the correct option. I mean any atom that is having two number in its symbols. The smaller number is proton number. The higher number is atomic mass. And atomic mass is also equal to nucleon number. That is also equal to proton plus neutron. I mean that is nucleon number. The number of proton or Z is one and same thing. So, question number eight, C is the correct option. Question number nine, an ionic compound has the formula Al2O3, that is aluminum oxide. What are the charges on the ions? So, let's see over here, Al2O3, I'm reciprocating these numbers, I mean, plus three over here, minus two over here, so, aluminum 3 positive, O minus 2, here are the charges of these two ions, again, uh, not again, I mean, C is the correct option. C is the correct option. Question number 10, which two pair of atoms are held by same number of bonds? First pair of the atom, second pair of the atom. A option, two carbon atoms, C2H4 molecule, 
and the second pair in this row carbon atom and one oxygen atom in CO2. Let me draw the structure of these two compounds. C H C two H four number one C two H four this one CO two this is the Lewis diagram of CO two this is C two H four and now let's see over here carbon atom and one oxygen atom that is having double bond two carbon atoms having also double bond so which two pair of atoms are held together by the same number of bond yes in both cases in first pair of atom in second pair of atom in these both cases carbon is attached with the double bond with oxygen in this case with other carbon in this case so a is the correct option a is the correct option question number 10 a is the correct option question number 11 boron trifluoride is a simple molecule there are three covalent bond in each bf3 molecule each of these bond is made by sharing of one electron from the boron atom and one electron from the fluorine atom so let's see over here boron F, 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 boron trifluoride. How many atoms are there in the boron's outermost shell at the moment? You know, boron belongs to the group number three and it is using, utilizing all three electrons. Here, one electron from fluorine according to the information given you can say and there are basically overall three covalent bond are there three bond pairs are over here i mean around boron three total bond pairs are over here so let's see over here what is the correct option what is unusual about the bonding in the boron trifluoride let's see number one i mean a option it is unusual for a non-metal such as fluorine to form a covalent bond no it is not unusual it's usual group 17 element Fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, they make two type of compounds. I mean, they make ionic compound, they can make covalent compound as well. So, they have dual property as far as the nature of bonding is concerned. So, it is not unusual. It is usual. So, A is incorrect. B, boron atom in each molecule does not gain electronic configuration of the noble gases. Let's see over here. Boron atom in each molecule does not gain electronic configuration of the noble gas. I mean, when there is a molecule and it is having more than one shell, there must be eight electron. Noble gas configuration says there must be eight electron surrounding the central atom or any atom that is having more than two shells. Let's see over here. This boron is having... 2, 2, 2, 6, yes, the sum of electron in the last shell of the boron is not equal to 8. So, B is the correct option. There is no electronic configuration like no bell gases. B is the correct option. Question number 12, which equation is correct for the reaction between carbon dioxide and magnesium hydroxide? Carbon dioxide is a, an acidic gas and magnesium hydroxide is a base. Yes, acid base reaction is going to happen over here. I mean CO2, I'm going to write it by myself. I mean H2, uh, Mg, OH twice, CO2 and goes to, it will be magnesium carbonate plus H2O. Let's balance this equation. Uh, magnesium carbonate, one magnesium, one magnesium, one carbon, one carbon. How many total oxygens are there? Two, two are four. I mean, two plus two, four. Three plus one, four. Two hydrogen equation is balanced. So this is the correct equation. Let me check from the option A, B, C, and D. One mole of CO2, one mole of magnesium, hydroxide one mole one mole 
वन मोल ऑफ मैग्नीशियम कार्बोनेट वन मोल ऑफ मैग्नीशियम कार्बोनेट वन मोल ऑफ वाटर वन मोल ऑफ वाटर इज करेक्ट ऑप्शन यस इज द करेक्ट ऑप्शन सो द फर्स्ट इक्वेशन इज द करेक्ट इक्वेशन क्वेश्चन नंबर थर्टीन Which mass of oxygen combines with exactly 16 gram sulfur to form SO2, sulfur dioxide? Which mass of oxygen gas combined with exactly 16 gram of sulfur? So formula is given. I am going to apply unitary method. You can say, and first of all, I am uh, taking the information from this formula. in so2 what is the ar of sulfur in this formula that is 32 g that is reacting with oxygen what is the total mass of oxygen in this formula 16 into 2 that is again 32 so 32 g sulfur is reacting with 32 g oxygen i mean 1 to 1 mass ratio is over here if i'm using 16 g sulfur what will be the mass same mass will be over here for oxygen this time 16 g so 13 c is the correct option c is the correct option in question number 13 question number 14 which compound has empirical formula that is different from its molecular formula yes let find its uh, empirical formula in each option butanol c4h10o and uh, it is having one oxygen so it cannot be further simplified any molecular formula if it is having one number uh, one mole atoms of nitrogen hydrogen oxygen etc then it simply it mean that it cannot be further simplified so a is incorrect option come towards hydrogen peroxide H two O two divided by two divided by two. Yes, it can be simplified, and its simplified form is H O. I think B is the correct option because uh, its empirical formula, this one, is different from its molecular formula. However, let me check the C and D as well. Again, nitrogen is one over here, so its empirical formula will not be different from its molecular formula. In D option, one second oxygen is also having. one number so i mean this formula h2o uh, cannot be further simplified so confirm that b is the correct option question number 15 4 g of sodium hydroxide is dissolved in 250 cm cube of water in a graduated flask 25 cm cube sample of this solution is titrated with 0.5 mol per dm cube hcl what Which volume of the hydrochloric acid is required to exactly neutralize the alkali? This is an acid-base reaction, acid-alkali reaction. I mean, I'm going to write equation first of all. NaOH plus HCl that is going to make uh, NaCl plus H2O. One mole of NaOH, one mole of HCl, and equation is balanced. So, first of all, let me check what is the concentration of NaOH. Here we are using the mass of NaOH. Let me convert this mass into mole. What is its MR? Its MR is equal to forty. So forty-four divided by forty is equal to mole of sodium hydroxide. That is equal to one by ten. I mean zero point one mole. So we are using zero point one mole of NaOH. We are dissolving it into two fifty centimeter cube. What will be the concentration? I mean, C is equal to n into thousand over v, and uh, mole is equal to zero point one. Volume is equal to two fifty and n into thousand. Sorry, that is equal to. I mean, the concentration of this n over which is equal to zero point four. That is in mole per dm cube. So the concentration of this solution is 0.4 mole per dm cube, and we are taking 25 centimeter cube from this solution. The concentration of this 25 will also be same. Concentration of this solution will also be the same. Will also be 25 centimeter cube is having also the same concentration. Its concentration is also 0.4 mole per dm cube. Now I'm using the formula C1 into V1 over N1 is equal to 
c2 v2 over n2 let's see uh, we are putting the acid data over here on the on the left hand side and base or alkali on the right hand side concentration of acid is equal to 0 0.5 0 0.5 the volume is equal to 25 over number of mole of the acid is equal to 1 volume of acid sorry it's not 25 it's zero zero point five concentration of the acid volume we are going to find the volume of acid number of mole is equal to one and uh, what is the concentration of the base that is zero point four multiply by the volume of the alkali taken is twenty five volume number of mole from the equation is again one so v one is equal to 0 0.4 over 0 0.5 multiplied by 25 the answer is equal to 20 centimeter cube so b is the correct option b is the correct option question number 16 dilute aqueous solution of potassium chloride and magnesium chloride are mixed together the sample of the mixture is electrolyzed using inert electrodes. What are possible product at each of electrode? Once again, let me check the chemistry of the different ions. Potassium ion is over here, positive ion and Cl negative ion from the potassium chloride. Magnesium chloride is giving, I mean magnesium two positive ion and Cl negative ion, you can say two mole of Cl negative ion, yes it is two. And water, that's aqueous solution because of water, it's positive ion and OH negative ions are also there. So, this is a dilute solution. In dilute solution, OH negative ion is the winner ion as compared to Cl negative ion. So, OH negative ion will move towards anode and it will make oxygen. 4 OH negative ion goes to H2O to H2O plus four mole of electron plus oxygen. So oxygen will be formed at anode. So either C or D may be the correct options. Come towards this one. Basically, potassium ion group one positive ion, magnesium ion is group two neg negative ion, group one positive ion and group two negative ion are not capable to gain an electron in the presence of H positive ion. So H positive ion is the more powerful positive ion as compared to potassium ion and magnesium ion. So hydrogen is going to be formed on cathode. I mean C is the correct option. C is the correct option. Question number 17. The table gives some statement about the electrolysis and reason why each statement is true. Which row shows a correct statement and the correct reason why statement is true. Statement A option aqueous copper 2 sulfate and aqueous copper nitrate are suitable electrolyte when using copper plate when used to copper plate subject. Basically whenever we are plating the copper on any object we need a copper 2 positive aqueous sign in our electrolytic solution. Yes, they both are soluble. They both are giving copper 2 positive ion, copper 2 positive ion. So, this statement A is the correct statement, is the correct option. Reason, as I told you, both solution contain copper 2 positive ion and can transfer copper from anode to cathode. So, that's why anode copper, because of uh, this migration, it can move from cathode anode to cathode it can move from yes because of copper 2 positive ion as the copper 2 positive ion will move from the solution and then anode will be dissolved into the electrolyte and ultimately copper ions are moving towards cathode so yes it is true basically solution is going to behave as a facilitator in this case copper 2 positive ion give ions towards cathode and the same number of ion is uh, received by the anode 
So anode is going to dissolve giving copper 2 positive ion via electrolytic solution and copper 2 positive ion is migrating itself towards cathode via solution. So I mean it's a correct reason, it's a correct I mean justification you can say. So A, 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 A is the correct option. A is the correct option. Statement is true, reason is also true. The next thing is question number 18. Student proposed four cells to produce electricity in school laboratory. Which cell would produce the largest voltage in a safe way? The largest voltage, number one thing is this one, in a safe way, basic thing is this one. To make, to produce the largest voltage, these metal must be of highest difference of reactivity. They must be having the maximum difference between their reactivity. I mean, one will be the top reactive metal and the second should be the least reactive metal or the lowest reactive metal and so on. So copper and zinc, I mean, I'm going to write the reactivity series over here. Potassium, sodium, calcium, magnesium, aluminium, zinc, iron, tin, lead, copper, mercury, platinum and so on. Let's see over here. Copper and zinc. Here is uh, copper and here is zinc. In this case, this same over here, copper and zinc. In C, sodium and copper. There is a more difference between the reactivity of these two, sodium and copper. And magnesium is copper. Magnesium and copper. Again, it's, I mean, there is a less difference in this case. Question number 19. Nitrogen oxides may form in atmosphere during lightning activity. N2 react with oxygen to make 2 mole of NO. The reaction is endothermic. Which energy profile diagram is correct for this reaction? As you know, the reaction is endothermic and it means that uh, its product must be higher than the reactant. So either D or C may be the correct option. These A and B are incorrect option. This profile, in case of A, this profile is true for exothermic, almost same is the case for the B. B may be correct, however, B is also incorrect. There must be, I mean, a hump between product and the reactant that is facing. So B is incorrect, A is incorrect. Now come towards C and D. Every reactant, either they are going to make exothermic reaction, or they are going to make endothermic reaction, they have to cross this barrier of energy of activation. So C is incorrect. D is the correct option. They need energy of activation. There must be the, this sort of hump in the diagram, in this energy profile diagram. So appropriate representation is in D. D is the correct option. Which two processes are both endothermic? Yes. Combustion and cracking, A option. No, combustion is always exothermic. Combustion is always exothermic. And respiration is also exothermic. So, only one option left. Cracking, yes, endothermic. Photosynthesis, yes, it is endothermic. So, C is the correct option. C is the correct option. That's all about the part one. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.